Welcome again, everyone, to another episode of Principal Sparks. My name is Andrew Murata, host of the show, and so excited to be here on Disrupt Ed TV. This is episode number eight. So, in today's episode, we are talking again about concepts from my book, The Principal, Surviving and Thriving. Tip number 32 in the book is hire great people. That sounds easy, right? Yeah, everyone wants to hire great people. But what can you do to really make sure you get great people? Because that's what makes good schools are, are great people. You want to have people that are going to be invested in your kids, invested in your school. And I know they say they'll walk and talk during the interview, but it's your job to decipher who's the real deal and who's not. So that's an important tip and an important concept for you as a school leader to know that you are doing a good job in that area. Again, tip number 32 in my book, The Principle, Surviving and Thriving. That being said, I'm going through this process right now. I just lost uh, my great assistant principal. Uh, his name's Tom Ricard. He's a fantastic guy and he is moving on. Uh, but we are going to search high and low. We are really going to go in depth here uh, to find the right replacement. So these are a couple of things that I do uh, to make sure that I hire great people. Number one is invest the time up front to really research the resumes. You know, certainly advertising it and getting the opening out there is, is important. But really going through the resume. Have other people look through the uh, batches of resumes and, you know, things that you look for on those resumes, right? How long have they been at certain places? Um, their uh, level of experience. Um, things they do in the school other than their job, right? Whether they were just a teacher. Do they coach? Do they do other things? Volunteerism, uh, that kind of stuff. Those are things that we look for. So number one, invest the time up front to get a strong candidate pool. My philosophy, one of the things I like to do is meet more people up front and then narrow it down. So I have shorter uh, interviews, more of them up front to meet more people. Number two, I am not a big, big committee guy. I pick a couple of teachers, uh, maybe a clerical, and usually uh, my partner. I try to have a wide range of people, so not more than four or five people. Um, and I'm not a big, big committee guy. I tell them at the end of the day, I have to make the decision. So the vote might be 4-1, but at the end of the day, I have to make the decision. You know, hopefully it's not 4-1 and we're, we're seeing people for uh, who they are. But get the right people uh, alongside of you. And certainly not everyone that agrees with what you say. Because you want a difference of opinion. The next thing is ask different type of questions. Right? It doesn't have to be all about education. Tell me what you'll see in a good classroom. Tell me what makes a good teacher. What are the roles of an, an assistant principal? Those kinds of things. But when was the last concert you went to? When was the last time you built something with your hands? Besides your job and your family, what are you most proud of? Those are different questions. Um, and you get to know a little bit about the person, right? Have some fun with them. If you're home by yourself and you're watching TV, do you go to Netflix or are you watching a live show on television? And what would those shows be? Uh, things like that. So have some different questions. The next thing, People can be taught to do anything, right? Is it a program that you have in your school? Is it a way to order exams? Things like that. People can learn processes. Look for the core values in the person. Do they love kids? Um, you know, what do they say about relationships and trust? Those things, those are the core values. That's the person. They can learn the processes, right? They can learn you know, your procedures or rules of the school, things like that. Uh, so listen for those very important things about love and kindness, gratitude. Are they grateful for things in their life? Uh, are they healthy, right? All of those type things. Lastly, um, in my second round, I like to do the walk and talk. Not really have that much of a structure. I want to get them out and about. Uh, talking to custodians, talking to kids. Do they pick up a wrapper that's on the floor? Uh, when they greet somebody, if the person's name is Mike, and they say, hi, I'm Mike, do they say, hey, Mike, I'm Joe, nice to meet you. Do they repeat the person's name? 
Do they talk about themselves or do they ask about the other person? Do they ask about the school, the culture? Those are things that you could tell by walking around. Walk into a classroom with them and ask them what they see. Uh, those are real life things and you can tell a lot from the walk and talk. So uh, I hope those tips are helpful, helpful for you. Hopefully you don't have to do a lot of interviewing uh, this time of the school year, uh, but it is an important aspect of the job. Hire great people. That's tip number 32 in my book, The Principal. If you're liking what you're seeing here on Principal Sparks, let's connect on Twitter at Andrew Murata 21 and you can listen to my full podcast, Education, Leadership, and Beyond, Surviving and Thriving. That's on uh, iTunes as well as Facebook. So if I could help you in any way, let's connect and uh, keep doing a great job. Keep going, changing the lives of kids. Uh, that's all for here uh, on Principal Sparks. My name is Andrew Murata, Disrupt Ed TV. Grateful for the opportunity to do this uh, short program and wishing you the best uh, as a school administrator. Have a great uh, time, everyone, and see you soon.